Hi everyone, I'm glad to see you here once again. Today's video marked the beginning of a number of appointments focused on the optimization of some MR parameters that we routinely manipulate for speed up the scan time, improve the image quality, and so on. And I want to start with a parameter that is probably not the first that comes to our mind when we think about altering a sequence, but whose importance, as we are going to see, is crucial from an, an optimization standpoint. This parameter is the bandwidth. In the Everything MRI channel, we already come across the bandwidth when we discuss about metal artifact reduction techniques. Today, we want to go a little bit further in detail and analyze this parameter from a broader perspective. For example, one thing we haven't mentioned yet is, when we talk about the bandwidth, there is a clear distinction to be made. We have a transmit bandwidth and we have a received bandwidth. The transmit bandwidth is the one we used in the radio frequency excitation pole to excite the slice, allowing us to select a specific slice thickness. For received bandwidth instead, we mean that range of frequencies that is accurately sampled during the sampling window. Bear in mind that the received bandwidth is a selectable parameter in the scan protocol, and the one many of us usually simply refer just as bandwidth. And with this table, we want to kind of summarize what could be a potential consequence on our image quality of either increasing or decreasing the received bandwidth. When we decide to boost the received bandwidth, for example, we also increase the highest frequency sample in the echo. Translated on our image, this means we will sample a greater component of noise and the overall signal to noise ratio will be therefore reduced. Regardless this, when we play with bandwidth, a common action we perform as a MARTEX is bringing it up. Someone might think, what the hell, I mean, why we deliberately decide to reduce our SNR and limit the amount of information within our field of view then? The reason is, as shown in this table, increasing the received bandwidth comes with a major benefit of a reduction of susceptibility, chemical shift, and especially metal artifacts. If you recall, in fact, we mentioned in the Mars video that boosting this parameter will have a major impact on reducing the number of in-plane distortions on images potentially affected by metal implants. Plus, since the sampling frequency is extended, the duration of the readout is reduced as a consequence, and this can bring to a potential decrease of the minimum value for parameters like TR, TE, and echo spacing. Honestly, this is something we usually do not dislike, especially as regards the TR, since in some circumstances, this can allow us to lower a little bit the scan time. So at this stage, a legitimate question is, do we have a decrease the bandwidth instead? There is a number of situations where lowering the bandwidth might be recommended. And this actually comes with a number of advantages on our image quality. Let's go back one moment to our table. As we can see here, the main benefit of going down with bandwidth is an increase in the overall SNR. And pay attention that we're talking about a substantial increment. Halving the bandwidth, in fact, can increase the SNR between 30 and 40%. This, however, is not exempted from drawbacks. This time, in fact, the minimum value for TR and TE might suddenly increase, and along with that, we will probably boost also the number of potential chemical shift artifacts. Now, is this always a matter of concern? I would say probably not always. Like, for instance, for most of the T2 fat set sequences, here the signal of the fat is removed, and longer TR and TEs are generally required. But again, best thing to do in these cases, let's test this directly on our MR scanner. First thing first, where we can find the bandwidth? In Siemens scanners, the bandwidth is located in the sequence tab under part 1. You can see it at the top right part of the screen. 
The scanner we are using is a 3 Tesla scanner. It might be worth to mention that in a scanner with such a high magnetic field strength, a reduction of the bandwidth will bring to a potential chemical shift increment, which will be basically twice as high compared to the one obtained at 1.5 Tesla. Therefore, better always to alter this parameter carefully. Generally, most Turbo Spinaco sequences are 3T are saved with a bandwidth of 250Hz over pixel, while at 1.5 Tesla this usually ranges between 130 to 190Hz over pixel. Now, let's take for example a Turbo Spinaco sequence from our Siemens tree. This is a TSC T2 fatsat saved originally with a bandwidth of 250Hz over pixel. Now let's imagine that the patient we are dealing has a metal implant and we want to lift the bandwidth up to a value of 400. As you can see, the SNR as a direct consequence is now decreased. However, as we mentioned, if there is no implant to be concerned of, for a sequence like this one, we can actually think about doing the opposite, meaning lowering the bandwidth instead. What happens, for instance, if we have it now to a value around 200, and there you go, you can see the SNR now went back to a decent level, which is actually even higher compared to the one we had at the very beginning when the bandwidth was set to a value of 250. Image quality wise, what can we spot? So for comparison purposes, we have here on the left side of the screen a T2 fat set acquired with a high bandwidth equal to 400, while on the right side of the screen we have the same sequence but obtained lowering the bandwidth to 200. Overall, we can immediately notice that the sequence where a higher bandwidth was used is characterized by a more pronounced component of noise. If you recall a few moments ago, the scanner was actually warning us about the fact that we were dropping our SNR. And I think this is quite reflected on our images. I would say that despite the image quality is pretty decent for both sequences, the one acquired with a lower bandwidth is definitely superior. Plus, chemical shift is less of a concern here rather than on other areas such as the abdomen and the neck. So overall, I have to say that in my opinion, having decreased the bandwidth can be considered a good call. Now, can this be generalized to every weighting? Let's find it out. Similar experiment, different weighting. We are dealing here with a TSC Corona T1, non fatsat Again, one has been acquired with a high bandwidth, whereas the other one with a low bandwidth. And correct me if I'm wrong, but this time spotting the differences can be a little bit more challenging. Maybe you have an eye which is more accurate than mine, but as far as I am concerned, what I can see is probably a very mild reduction of the SNR in the sequence with a higher bandwidth, especially around the muscles surrounding the shoulder. But the difference is way less marked compared to the example we have seen before. Don't you think so? And pay attention on this instead. This is the tab with the sequence we just acquired, with an initial scan time of 3 minutes and 54 seconds and a minimum TR value of 721 milliseconds. Now, these are the settings if we keep a bandwidth of 200. We have already seen that increasing the bandwidth will decrease the SNR, which we have found out to bring to a negligible difference image quality wise this time. But what's happening to our acquisition time instead? Apparently nothing, increasing the bandwidth just abuse a little bit the value for the T, we just seen. What about the TR? Let's check. There you go. Can you see? Now, our minimum TR value has been reduced to 669 milliseconds, which means we will be able to lower the scan time to 3 minutes and 37 seconds, almost 30 seconds less than our initial scan time. In a world like MRI where time is gold, this is something we do not definitely complain about. 
So we went through different examples and different outcomes. My only suggestion is do your own testing, see how it goes trying different uh, values of bandwidth. However, it is important to know what might be the effect of a potential alteration. And that's why along with the table I showed you in the previous slide, I will leave also this very nice recap which I found out in a paper that you can access clicking on the link in the description below. According to the decision we take, either increasing or decreasing the bandwidth, there are several potential advantages or disadvantages that will be reflected on our image quality. But what can we do? I mean, MRI is constantly a trade-off, so we need to get used to struggle to find the right balance. And that was the end of this video. I hope that helps to feel a little bit more comfortable with dealing with the bandwidth. There will be still a lot of MR parameters to investigate and study. So guys, do not forget to subscribe to the channel and as usual, I will see you around.